If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Farmstead Frontier. But before that, this video is brought to you by Gaming with Dark Fang and Desert Ox Farms. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Farmstead Frontier map. You can find over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release and probably forever release, this is a PC only map. Now this is a frontier style map or a wilderness style map. It is also 4X in size. And that's why I'm saying that this is likely going to forever be a PC only release because we've yet to see a 4X map get released and stay released for console in FS22. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Farmstead Frontier. Farmstead Frontier invites you to pioneer your own farming adventure on a vast and untamed landscape. Start small with a single field and a modest set of vintage machinery, perfect for carving out your first steps in the farming world. But don't be fooled about this about don't be fooled by the simplicity. This map is a canvas for your grandest ambitions. Whether you dream of cultivating sprawling fields, a stretch across the horizon, or prefer to nurture a cozy, compact farmstead, the choice is yours. With a diverse array of viable land and endless possibilities for expansion, you're free to shape the frontier to your vision. You will conquer the land with agriculture, or will you embrace the wild and delve into forestry? The path you take is entirely up to you. The farmstead frontier is yours to tame, mold, and thrive upon. Start your journey today and forge your own legacy on the frontier. Wow, that's that's really motivational. This map includes one pre-built farm, one field, woodland for forestry, two train silos, two gas stations, a sawmill, mine buying point, farmer's market, two small town areas with cell points. This map is platinum ready with container cell points and also precision farming ready. And we are going to use the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the starting farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode. In addition, you have starting machinery in all game modes, as well as the buildings. So your best bet is to fire this thing up in farm manager mode, which will give us the largest bank balance to start out with. In addition, if you happen to have a low end system, you can feel free that you can run this without any issue whatsoever, because on my test system, which uses AMD integrated graphics, I was getting a solid 60 frames per second wherever I was on this map. So anybody with any sort of discrete graphics, you should be pretty darn good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And I will tell you that the green areas here are grasslands and the brown areas here are gonna be forest. We take a look at our lands overview. Good golly, oh my molly, there is a whole lot of options with respect to viable farmlands. We start up owning farmland ID 139. That is the main starting farm that we bought in any alternate game mode for $437,000. You do have quite the choices of both forestry farmlands to buy and grasslands in order to buy, really carve up and make your own way. We do have two small towns, and that is where we're going to find all of the cell points. And we have a train line that cuts its way across north to south and then loops or turns and then makes an east to west run to the other end of the map. We do have all the standard crops available to us here on FS22. In addition, if we do have the premium expansion enabled, we have the red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields. Nope, they're not going to on this map. And then how much that farmland is going to cost us. Remember, this is a 4X map. So while we have close to or over 200 viable farmlands, these farmlands aren't necessarily all extremely small because again, this is four times the standard size of a normal farm sim map.
Now, what I typically say, let's go ahead and cross-reference that with the field calculator screen, but that's going to be pretty short-lived because, well, there's only a single field on this map, and it is 4.61 hectares in size, and that is there at our starting farm. There really isn't much use to show you the precision farming soil map. This map does have a custom soil map associated with it, but the fact that all you would see is this little bit of land down here, there isn't much use in that. Just know that when you do carve this map up, you are going to have a custom soil map to expose. With respect to our crop counter, we have the standard FS22 crop counter available to us here on this map. And looking down through our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops, as well as our animal outputs and eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. We also do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items. So there's going to be ample room to expand and put production down because, well, you got a whole lot of land to do it in, and there are multiple sell points that will accept just about everything. We do have the ability to not only buy, but also sell our lime. And we also have two locations that will accept our stones if we play with stones enabled. The ability to sell things continues because we do have the ability to sell our farm production pack, washed root crops, as well as our premium and platinum expansions. So we pretty much have the ability to sell just about literally everything on this map at the get-go, which I really do like to see. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, well, we also have you covered there. And those running with straw harvest, you're also covered with respect to your hay and straw pellets. We start out with a fairly modest list of starting equipment, as one would expect in a wilderness style map. It is all owned and none of it is leased. We do not have any animals at the start. and We do not have any contracts because, well, this map doesn't have any fields that are not owned. And we also do not have any production chains at the start. Then lastly, well, you're going to have to make your own money because there's no free money here. Yes, there are also no collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start out with the Bure 6105 small tractor. We've got the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor. The Dutzfar top liner 4090H harvester. We're going to have the 4090H grain header and 4090H header trailer. We've got our trusty 1986 pickup truck, as well as the Walger DK-115 trailer. We've got the Servo 25 plow, as well as the EG-39 cultivator, the Nordstein HK-25 NS-3030 cedar and power harrow combination. And then we wrap it all up with a 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. As far as your farm tour goes, well, you are literally looking at it we load here we start at our farm entrance we have a farm house which is our trailer so we have our sleep trigger located right there we have an old rundown barn and that is going to hold some of our starting machinery as well as a pair of seed pallets around the side we have a fuel tanker and then around on the other side we have our farm stylo Everything here at the starting farm can indeed be sold. Now, while the land here around the starting farm is flat, I will tell you that that does not continue into more of the open areas. We will have rolling hills on most of the grassland. And if you look way off in the distance over there, you don't see any trees, but that is a big hilly forested area so this is one of the large grassland areas that we can come in here and carve up and buy individual spots for and this is a lot less flat than maybe the video is making it appear here you see the land is really falling away and it's going to be coming back up to us as we make our way further across Now you can see our trees popping in over there in a forested area. This map does have two train silos for selling product at the train, storing product in those train silos, and transferring product from one train silo to the next. With respect to production being built into the map, we have a single production built into the map, forestry. 
So a sawmill is built in. That is a fairly appropriate production to have built into a wilderness style map. We have a nice windy mountain road heading its way up here, up the mountainside. You see a little bit of altitude and we kind of see how that mountain road is progressing. And then as we look across the grass areas now, we can see a little bit of the rolling nature in the various inclines and changes in elevation over in the main grassland area. Coming back down here to the southern town. We have a cell point located down here. Here we have our train transfer silo. So we have our trailer fill point. We have our dump point there. We have our rent train trigger. And we have our dump and fill points for the train located right there. Then over here, we do have a container cell point for our logs. Across the railroad tracks, we're going to have a grain cell point located right there. Farmer's market cell point. And then our only production on this map here at our sawmill. So we have our wood chip spawn point. We have a cell point for our logs. We have a dump point for our logs here at the production, our interactive icon, our pallet spawn point, and our wood cell trigger. Now I think we're going to not so much make our way diagonally across, but I do want to just kind of start here. And then we're going to wind our way around to the northern part. But I wanted to start there because you can see the land fall away. You'll see the land rise coming back up to us and then falling away again. So you get another kind of general representation of how the land ebbs and flows. Remember, this is separated up into multiple parcels. With respect to the ability to sell arbor basin crops, animal outputs, and productions, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Because we do indeed have the ability to literally sell everything and anything that we could activate that has come from Giants as far as an official DLC or expansion. Abilities where appropriate are using the new texturing techniques as well as our ground textures. Let's go ahead and take a look at our ground textures because we have not really taken a look at those. Under landscaping, painting, we do have some custom ground textures or modded ground textures that have been applied here. Fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees as well. Some folks might want to know, can you plant trees? Well, I don't have the land owned here. We'll have to check that out a little bit later. As far as productions go, we have all basic FS22 items. I don't believe we have any custom buildings that are a part of this map either. Let's just kind of come here through the forest. Once we do clear the land off here, see that we have kind of a grassy forest bottom. Our forest floor. Here we have our vehicle shop. And down at the vehicle shop, we have our shop trigger. And we have our dealer trigger located right here. Now, one thing that we do not see here is where this actual deal tr dealer trigger is located. It is located right here at the door. It would be nice to have seen some markers, though, indicating as such. And then as far as our spawn point for our vehicles, we've got a huge area here for our vehicles to spawn. A pretty large area as well for our vehicles to get out of the shop. And then make their way down into the wilderness. 
We take our way north up the road and then hang a left at the intersection. Well, this is going to be our other small town. We have a fuel point. This is going to be a large diner cell point. We have a lime buying station. Here we have a container selling station. And then this is the second train silo. So we have a rent train trigger. We have our dump and fill point for trailers. And we have our dump and fill point for our train. So we continue to make our way here into town. And we have another grain cell point at BW Feed and Seed. That is located right there. We have our animal dealer. And we have our animal dealer bale cell point. And then we have a loose cell point here to sell loose hay straw grass silage and such. And that folks is pretty much this map. As is with most wilderness maps, there's not a whole lot going on until you yourself as a player really start putting things down. What may, does make this a little bit more unique is that it is a full-on 4x wilderness style map. And I do know that that is an area that has been much requested from various PC players in the past. And quite frankly, this may be a map that some PC players kind of play the remainder of Farm Sim 22 out on because of the near endless possibilities that maps like this do afford. Our last scoring metric with respect to trigger interactive areas being clearly marked, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point there because we are missing the indicator markers at the vehicle shop. I would like to have seen the corner markers there outlining where that dealer trigger was located. And as such, that's going to give this map a score of 4.75 out of 5. Now, I'd love to know your all's thoughts down in the comments below. With respect to wilderness maps like this, is this something that is up your alley? And are you going to be looking for wilderness maps to make a return in Farming Simulator 25? Until next time, happy farming.